All right, let's uh, let's uh, talk about uh, designing uh, a little bit about talk about designing databases. All right. Uh, and uh, and so now designing databases. When, when you're designing data in general, right? It's a it's the it's a question: on How is that we're going to structure uh, our data, right? To be able to fulfill some of the goals. Uh, to be able to fulfill all those use cases, right, that uh, we've been uh, interviewing our client about, right? Uh, the user, um, you know, is, is describes uh, their system in terms of lots and lots of nouns and verbs and a lot of verbiage. Uh, uh, a lot of it is irrelevant, and we need to be able to you know, sit, uh, 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 go through it and identify what are the nuggets, right, that we really need. Um, now, for, from um, if you are implementing. Uh, data, uh, uh, data and structuring the data, uh, and and you're you're implementing it for a high level language, maybe like Java or C sharp and whatnot. Uh, a good place to start is always through the uh, at a very high level modeling language, which is uh, UML. Okay, uh, you would then uh, convert that e either manually or through one of these very expensive UML uh, tools. You know, just pressing a button, it would generate all the classes uh, for you. Right, that. Um, you can then continue from there on, uh, and, uh, and 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 then you you would fill in the blanks, right, and filling all the methods and, and the actual implementation, right. The architect uh, gets paid big bucks to uh, to generate the UML diagram and generate the the stub classes that can then uh, be then giving out to the middle and uh, junior engineers, right, to actually fill in the details, right, on how to get, get implemented. Um, if you're if you're designing and structuring data for databases, uh, you want to be able to you know, store the, this actually for permanent use. Uh, you would also typically start at the UML uh, at, a, at a high level uh, modeling language um, such as uh, UML, uh, and then you would then again either press a button or manually uh, create the schema, right? That uh, the, the tables and the fields and the and the, and the foreign keys and primary keys that would uh, implement your uh, relational model. In either case, right, the best place to start is at a high-level uh, language, right, such as uh, UML. Right, it's a uh, it's often the case that if you already have uh, Java classes or or schema, right, it's a uh, and you want to modify or make make or even understand what this uh, what the data model is and how it's structured and what the relationships are. It's often a, a good idea to convert back to the high level. Make the changes and then convert back into the low-level uh, implementation. Okay, um, uh, so so let's uh, let's uh, just review real quick uh, some some object-oriented uh, fundamentals. Uh, we we, um, we in uh, you know, objects as we um, uh, might uh, be be aware of, right? They they maintain some kind of uh, unique identity, right? They represent uh, some. Uh, presumably represents some real phenomena, represents a, a, a real user, right? A, a real monitor, a real uh, table, a real building, a real university, right? A real course, right? a real section. So presumably, whatever we're storing uh, in a database it, it represents some some physical phenomena, right? Some some real tangible thing in our reality. Okay, uh, and uh, and and so they have identities, right? So some record. In some table, presumably, it rep represents something physical in the in, in the in the real world, uh, and uh, uh, such as you know, a person, a company, a tree. Uh, now, now this this uh, these these entities might have different uh, values associated with them, like this is my age, um, right, and and with things that might change over time, right? Uh, my height, you know, I'm just getting shorter. Uh, so, so, but it's still me, right? Even though I, I change over time and my values uh, 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 about me change over time, it's still me, right? Um, you know, the, the house is a house even though we might paint it a different color, right? Uh, uh, so the first thing is uh, what we'd like to represent is, is what is that, is the essence uh, of a particular person or uh, me as a collection or, uh, or part of a of a uh, of a uh, collective that that makes me a person, right? What is it that makes me a per person um, in general? Not me per se, but a general uh, a, a person in general, right? Uh, so what makes me a human? 
uh, and, uh, and, and so, so classes allows us to uh, describe in general terms, right, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the various attributes that uh, describe any one person, right? Uh, different persons might have different values, right? Different persons might have different identities, but nevertheless, we can, we can, um, uh, we, we can uh, say certain things about certain types of things, right? How do we classify different things? Um, uh, so classes is uh, an object orientation is or object oriented technology allows us to describe the, the template that, that that describes things of the same class. Uh, names for the classes typically should be a singular noun or noun phrase. Um, and um, abstract classes, classes that are are ideas, right? That might not have a uh, uh, an equivalent in real in real life, uh, oftentimes are referred to as abstract classes, right? Uh, for instance, um, uh, things are, uh, that can not, might not have, that are ideas, for instance, might be the idea of a shape, okay? Uh, we might talk about different types of shapes that are concrete shapes, such as rectangles and circles. Those are concrete shapes, right? They have a particular radius and whatnot. But shape is too vague, right? I don't have enough information uh, to be able to draw a shape until you tell me what type of shape it is. Right, so uh, we often refer to as uh, shapes that cannot be concrete, right? They're not, they can't be represented in physical form. We call them abstract classes, and they have uh, itemized uh, names. Uh, or, or um, there are other ways of, of, of um, uh, telling that they're uh, abstract. We'll see that in a minute. Uh, uh, classes might, uh, also might have uh, attributes, right? That uh, that describes the different values associated to that particular uh, person or, or class. And they might have uh, methods that uh, capture the, the, the various uh, behaviors of that, of that class. So here's, here's a class diagram in all its glory, right? It's a, it's a box with three different distinct sections. Uh, the first section captures the, uh, the name of the, of the class, right? Uh, the, the, the name could, could be person or uh, course, uh, section, building, tree, person, whatever, right? It, it, and, and then the attributes are the things that describe that building, right? The, 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 how many stories it has, the year that it was built, the architect, okay? Um, and, and, um, and, and all the attributes that describe that, that, uh, uh, that might describe a, a building in general, okay? And you might have different instances of buildings with different attributes, different values of that attribute, these different identities. Uh, notice that we have the, the types, uh, colon type described the data type, whether it's an integer, a boolean, a float, a, a double, uh, an array, whatnot, right? So it would be after, colon, and then the type. Uh, notice that it has a plus and a minus on the left-hand side describing their accessibility, right? Whether uh, these are private uh, uh, attributes or public attributes that can be accessed from, from outside or cannot be accessed from outside. And there's also hash uh, to represent um, uh, protected. So there's also, oh wait, can I do hash? Oh, okay. Uh, or here, let me do hash here. There we go. Uh, and that, that will be used for in, when we talk about inheritance, right? Being when, when, when uh, you have children that inherit from their parents, okay? I'm sure you've, you've seen, you've all seen, uh, some, at some point you've seen these kind of uh, diagrams. Uh, attributes the, uh, the, the, that describe, uh, for instance, uh, the, the describe a particular class uh, will have a, uh, typically it's all lowercase or, or camel case if it's uh, more than one word. Um, so here we have a person class and um, described by three attributes such as username, password, and uh, date of birth. Uh, zero, one. Oh, okay, it's optional. Um, uh, of which they're all private, right? They're not accessible from anywhere outside. The first two are strengths, uh, and, uh, and, and, the, and, and you can use many different data types such as strengths, integer, doubles, Boolean, dates, time. They don't necessarily have to map to a, a Java data type or a, um, uh, a, a, a database a schema data type, right? It doesn't have to map to anything physical, anything real, right? This is all conceptual. Right, um, and uh, it, it, it allows us to talk about the, uh, the the classes, 
at a very high level conceptual uh, um, level, right? So that we don't, we don't, we don't, we're not necessarily talking about implementation using Java or C Sharp or, or whatever object oriented language we're going to choose. Um, this allows any person who understands object orientation, right, to talk to any, uh, anyone else, right, without any specifics on what particular language implementation it is, right? Uh, multiplicity allows us to capture how many of, uh, of each one uh, of, the, um, of, these, uh, um, of these instances there are, right? Uh, so for instance, it allows us to say uh, that each one of these folks, uh, there might be uh, this minimum and this maximum number of elements, right? So it's written using the, the, the square brackets m colon, col uh, I mean dot dot n, uh, m representing the minimum, number and n and n representing the maximum uh, or star meaning that there are multiple or in unlimited uh, there's a the default if you don't say anything it means that there's at least one and at most one right uh, and so for instance um, and this will be useful when we talk about a, a relationship between uh, different um, uh, different classes which we'll see in a minute okay uh, there's uh, some, the, down here. There's some of the more common uh, multiplicities. You know, zero, one, meaning it could be either a zero or one, meaning that it's optional. If if there's no uh, instances of this, it's zero, or there's there's at, least, uh, at most one, right? Uh, this one exactly one means that it's mandatory. There has to be at, uh, at a minimum there must be one of these, and at most one of them, meaning it's mandatory. It needs to be there. Uh, zero or more. Uh, this means that there's any number of values including zero, no, no values at all, or there can be any number of them, right? Or we can have at least one, uh, it's represented as one colon, I mean dot dot star, that there has to be at least one, but there could be more than one, one or more. This is zero or more, this is one or more. Uh, this is zero or one, I meaning it's optional. Uh, here we're saying that the date of birth, the date of birth is, is optional. Yes, it's, it's optional, meaning if you don't give it to me, that's fine. Right, if you don't give me the add the value for the attribute date of birth, okay, I'm going to allow you to insert and create a person without the date of birth, right? But username and password notice that the default is one one, meaning it's mandatory, right? You have to give me at least a username and a password, right? That's the default. Uh, 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 enumerations, uh, enumerations uh, are captured uh, using Something that looks like a class, uh, but it's not really a class, right? Yes. So, what another way to say one one is that like not null. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not null is one way to represent uh, required, right? I won't let you insert unless I have a value for this. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So enumerations uh, look like, uh, they're they're captured in a box that looks like very much like a class, uh, uh, but it's not a class, right? Uh, notice that on top of it, uh, there is a there is a uh, pointy brackets on top of it, right? Uh, with this enumeration, uh, and, and what this allows us to do, uh, these these are stereotypes, right? That allows us to expand the uh, the the uh, UML uh, language, right? When there's when we we we, we come up with a uh, a, a type of uh, uh, data that we want to capture, and we don't we don't have an explicit representation in UML. Uh, UML allows us to expand the language and just create our own our, our own understanding or our, our own meaning of what this means, right? In enumeration, what we mean by enumeration is a um, a um, a determined set of valid values, right? Uh, that uh, that that a particular uh, data type can have. So, for instance, uh, the integers the integers is an enumeration, it's an enumerated data type, which corresponds to all the values. Uh, you know, minus infinite all the way to uh, minus one, right? Then the zero, and then all the whole numbers that go from one to plus infinite, infinity, right? Those are all the enumerated values that the integer data type can take. Make sense, right? If I if I say um, um, uh, that uh, instead of an integer, right, I have another attribute whose value can only be movie genre. genre then what are the possible values that that, that, that uh, uh, piece of uh, attribute could have? Well, it could, it, it, I can't put numbers in there, um, right? I can't put floating point values in there. I can't put dates in there. What can I put in there? Well, 
some, some valid values that I could put for a, an attribute of type of genre uh, are some of the values. Valid values is horror, comedy, sci-fi, and fantasy. Those are all valid values for a data type of genre. Make sense? Right? Uh, so in um, uh, uh, most uh, 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 relational databases allows you to implement this with uh, things such as enum. Right? Uh, certainly MySQL allows you to just list all the valid values for a particular um, uh, attribute. We're not going to be using that. Right? In, uh, we're going to use another implementation uh, since uh, not all databases support that particular uh, implementation. Instead, we're going we're gonna to look, look at another implementation a little later. Uh, but notice that these are not attributes. Horror, comedy, sci-fi, fantasy, these are not properties, okay? like here. Username, password, date of birth, these are properties, right? These are attributes of a person class, right? And you might have different instances of a person, each one with a different username, each one with a different password, each one with a different date of, date of birth. Make sense? This is not a class. You're not going to have an instance of movie genre, you know, different instances of movie genre, OK? Um, 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 where horror is an attribute, where comedy is an attribute. These are not attributes, right? These are values uh, that, can, uh, that, that are used to, uh, for, or for some other attribute of type movie genre. Uh, specialization and generalization allows us to capture inheritance, right? Uh, where uh, we might have a, um, a base uh, a superclass uh, that allows us to capture very high level uh, uh, attributes that are common across uh, different uh, uh, things that are more specific. So for instance, you might have an employee uh, class that captures all the attributes that are uncommon to all types of employees, right? So all types of employees, they all have first names, they all have last names, they all have a social security number, they all have a, uh, maybe the, the date that they started, right? That's common to all employees. But then you might have special types of employees, such as you might have hourly employees, right? And you might have you know, full-time employees, and, and, uh, and, and so all these types of employees might have specific attributes, right? And, you know, the, 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 the hourly employee will have other pieces of data, not only the, the first name and last name and whatnot, right? But will also additionally have uh, attributes such as uh, their hourly rate, you know, how many hours they work this, this, this week and whatnot, right? Uh, but a full-time employee won't have these attributes, right? A full-time employee will have other attributes such as uh, their, you know, their their yearly salary, right? Uh, their their uh, their um, their reviews and whatnot, right? For a full-time employee, right? So generalization and specialization allows us to break up, you know, those things that are in common to all employees, and break up those things that are special about any type of employee. Make sense, right? Uh, so for in our assignment, uh, I believe there is a, uh, a, a super class or a base class called widget that captures things that are common to all widgets, right? such as a name, a width, height. So all widgets have that, right? maybe a foreground color, background color, classes, and whatnot. Uh, but then, then you might have uh, the image widget and the heading widget. You might have other features, right? other attributes that are specific to these widgets, right? such as oh, maybe width not. Width, <laughs> width is over there, so uh, we should scratch that, right? not width. Oh, so this might be within pixels, where this might be within in, in, uh, percentages, right? So you might have two different attributes capturing different things. Or you might have one width and then the units, right? Whether it's pixels or, or, or percentage, you might want to capture it that way, right? Um, uh, another example is you might have a, a, a shape superclass, right? That might capture things about all shapes. All shapes might have a width and a height. Uh, all shapes might have a foreground color, the, the size of the border. The, 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 the coloring of that border, right? Uh, the width of that border, the, the, the foreground color that's filled in, the filled in uh, uh, color. But then different shapes that might have different specific things, such as uh, the circle might have a radius, um, right? The, 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 the triangle might have a base and a height, right? So, so anyway, so each, each one of these shapes uh, might, um, might capture things that are more specialized. So that's why they're called specializations and generalizations, right? Uh, they have different names, uh, different, different jargon uh, that capture the same idea, either subclass, superclass, or inheritance, or derivation. Uh, they're different ways of saying the same thing, okay? Um, 
we, we also often uh, re uh, um, talk about the relationship between these two as saying that uh, a heading is a widget, an image is a widget, right? So, so we say that this is an is-a relationship, right? This, uh, this specialized um, uh, subclass is a, or is a kind of, right, the above one, right? And the way we document it is with a triangle pointing to the superclass, right, the more general class. Make sense? All right. Um, Multi-valued attributes, so some attributes uh, might have multiple values, such as like arrays, right? Maybe I have several, uh, maybe I, I generate a post, and then that post might have different tags associated with it, right? Uh, saying that, you know, what, what are the uh, various topics of that particular post, right? Uh, and to do that, uh, we can use the same, uh, the same uh, multiplicity uh, brackets, right, that we, we, we saw earlier, right? And uh, saying that uh, there could be any number or at least one value, right, for the tags and whatnot. Um, indicated using again um, using plurals plurals or plural noun like tags putting the s at the end um, associations allows us to capture the relationships between two different two different classes right um, and uh, uh, there are other ways that these are known by such as relations or connections or links right um, and uh, and and usually is a, it's a two way a relationship. Right, depending from where you see uh, the, the the relationship. Right? So if you see it from the author's point of view, the author writes books. Right. If you see it from the book's point of view, uh, a book is written by an author. Yes. Uh, and uh, and typically you should be able to uh, to read this as a full sentence. Right. Starting from one of the classes and then navigating to the other class. Right. So for instance. If, I'm, if you start from the book, you should be able to read this as a, um, as a full sentence. Book is written by author, or authors write books. Yes? Uh, so it's just, just specified as a line. Uh, and, um, and then each, each, uh, these labels that we use, these are uh, uh, referred to as the role. Right? So writes and is written by, those are the roles in the association. Okay? What, kind, what is the role of the book? Right in this association, well, the role of the book is that it's written by an author, and from the author's point of view, what is the role of the author? Is that the author writes books? Okay, that is the role of it is written on the side of the uh, of the class. Make sense? Um, all right, yeah. So, um, so it's a verb phrase, right? And it's it needs to, it should read like a like a like a phrase. Yeah. Uh, now you can you can also uh, document. And how many, <clears throat> how many uh, of these, of each one of these uh, classes participate in this association, right? Uh, using the multiplicity uh, uh, annotation that we saw earlier, right? You might say that uh, one author can write many books, right? And so, so here at the, at the top, you might have uh, zero or more authors participating on the above side, and you might have one or more authors participating. Uh, on the other side, right, uh, where you can you can create a, a kind of like a you can, it could be just one author writes many books, but you could also have one book that is written by many authors, right? So you can have uh, one author writes many books, or you can have one book written by many authors, right? Uh, and so the multiplicity tells us you know how many of each one of these instances participates in an association, okay? Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, there might be zero authors, so a book gets written by itself. Uh, that makes no sense. Uh, well, eventually, yes, right. We we have uh, already uh, AI that can write uh, articles uh, that um, that that folks prefer uh, articles written by AI, which is scary. Um, have you read the news lately? I, I think an AI could come up with a better story. That's what I said. That that AI certainly can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that some we might have passed the Turing test already. Um, right. So oftentimes when you when you read these uh, uh, the, when you read the requirements, right? Usually the requirements will will describe this association 
in one direction, right? It'll say, you know, books write author. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> authors write books, right? It often won't say that books are written by authors, right? It's kind of implied, right? That that one of one of the uh, one of the associations on the other side, it's implied, right? But nevertheless, it's a it's it's a good idea to uh, document it uh, regardless. Um, uh, when you know, oftentimes uh, we we need we need to we need to be able to ask uh, you know uh, about about these associations, what labels to put, and how many participate uh, in these associations is um, you know can can a book be written by more than one author right to be able to determine what kind of what kind of multiplicity to put on on the other side of the relationship. Uh, now, oftentimes these associations uh, is not enough to say. Right, that a, a, a an author writes a book. Maybe we want to know a little bit more about that association. Right, we'd like to be able to capture enough, a, a little more information about how about the details of that association. Right. Notice that here, there's no way to put any 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 information about you know how is that association. Can you tell me a little more details about that association? Uh, to to do that, to be able to capture uh, uh, that uh, you know um, more details about the association. We can use an association class, right? A separate class, right? That could implement, uh, capture things such as, you know, as the author writes the book. Well, maybe we want to capture what was the, you know, what, what what were the things that were added and removed and edited and changed over time, right? And we can capture what how you know a little more about that association, right? That a particular edit was done at a particular date, right? And these were all the edits that, at the at the end, uh, produces a particular uh, uh, um, written written book. Uh, aggr aggregations uh, um, are um, allow us to capture a little more about uh, when we have a one-to-many relationship. For instance, here we have a uh, one page. Uh, um, Having uh, associated with many widgets, right? There might be several widgets in a page, right? We might have dragged many widgets, a heading widget, a, 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 an image widget, and whatnot. Uh, and uh, we like to capture a little more. It, it, it might be enough if we say just one to many, and that's it, right? But if we want to capture uh, the relationship, the life cycle relationship uh, between these two, uh, we can use aggregation, right? Or association, okay? Uh, these two. Uh, uh, can um, can capture what is the dependency of one versus another, right? So, for instance, uh, if um, um, uh, if we say that one perhaps can live uh, independent of the other, right? Then we're talking about uh, aggregation, right? If instead we say that one cannot live without the other, then we are talking about uh, composition, right? Uh, so, so these two, the comp composition and aggregation, right? Uh, what they do is that not only do they capture the fact that there's a one to many, right? That's implied. There's implied, and you might want to specify whether it's exactly zero, or, uh, and, you know, zero to many or one to many, uh, and um, uh, so so you would certainly add the, the multiplicity there if it's not clear, uh, but at least it means that it's one to many. Uh, but you would add the uh, the uh, the diamond, right? Either filled in or, or empty, to capture whether um, whether uh, what what the lifespan is one versus another, right? So you might ask, uh, if I remove a user, do I remove all their pages? If I remove a a, a user, do I remove all the their blog posts? Right? Probably not, right? Uh, you know, removing a, a user not necessarily means I'm also going to remove all the uh, the data that all the uh, uh, posts that they've written, right? If I remove, if an author dies, do their books die with the author? Probably not, right? The the books certainly outlive the uh, the the author. Uh, but so so we would capture that like an aggregation, right? We can remove the record of a of a of a of an author, but not necessarily we're going to remove all the books associated to that author. Whereas if you have a, a pages and widgets, does it mean does it make sense to keep track? Of widgets, if we remove a page, can a widget outlive a page? Probably not. It makes no sense, right? You would only uh, want to keep things around, right? If you want to be able to reference them from elsewhere, right? Maybe reuse something uh, from from other places, or you might have different references to the same piece of object. Here, widgets make no sense to keep them around. 
if you remove a page. All right? So you would use a composition. You would say that if the page dies, so do, so, uh, so do the uh, widgets. Right? They, they, they also die. And the way you will, will, will see how we implement those is with uh, cascades, right? cascade deletes, or cascade deletions, or cascade, uh, cascading deletion. Um, and, and certainly, uh, databases support that kind of feature. Make sense? All right. So this is this is a um, uh, the 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 absolute minimum uh, that we need to go forward with uh, UML. UML is a you know a certainly a wide topic of discussion. Uh, there are many many different other types of diagrams um, uh, uh, that uh, uh, that we're not going to cover. Uh, these are the bare minimums that we need to go forward and do data analysis, all right? All right, let's keep going.